In Colombia, we have a dance called La Cumbia. La Cumbia de Colombia. It's our national dance. It's mainly a woman's dance. When I came to the US, I brought a version of my flag, I brought the cumbia dress, I brought my music, I brought my flowers, my hat, my jewelry, all my dancing gear, and I brought the cumbia with me, not thinking that I would dance it again, but thinking that I needed these objects to remind me of who I was. When I left Colombia, I had all the intentions of going back. And I didn't go back. Okay, why don't developing countries develop? Because of the golden rule. The golden rule is that the one with the gold makes the rule. If you are a developing country and you need my money to develop, I'll make the rules of how you're going to develop. At Georgetown, I teach information and communication technologies for development. This is a course about how technology affects the quality of life of people and how to use technology to solve some problems of development in the global south when you're implementing technology in places where there might not be electricity or there might not be internet. That comes with a lot of challenges. So if we're implementing technology in a refugee camp, I had to think about what kind of mobile phones do these refugees have? Do they have mobile phones? You know, is this solution something that they actually need? And so to have to work through all those questions was really helpful. This course has to do with my dissertation. It has to do with what I believe in. It has to do with my career, with the jobs I've had. It's so intertwined to what I do that it's almost my fourth baby, if you will. I was born and raised in Colombia. It's a different perspective when you're born in a place that doesn't have the resources that the U.S. has. We have to repair things. We have to use things longer. We have to use hand-me-downs from family members. So there's a whole way of looking at the world that is different when you come from the Global South. I think this will fit her. I was raised up thinking education is the way that you can move ahead. It's the only way that you can have social mobility. And here and now, I think education is the only way that you can understand the world. Come put the flower on. Let me see how this flower is going to work in your hair. The grass thing. Oh, there it is. Let me see. Mm. That's how it's going to look. Am I going to wear this? With mm -hmm. I was sewing this for you. Oh. Should I put it on? Come here. Let me see if it actually fits you. Okay. Go dress. No. And be careful with the flower. Yes, ma'am. I didn't even know much about her background, and then we started talking about her research, and I was like, wait, you brought the internet to Colombia. Wait, why didn't you mention that at the beginning of class? Like, in your introduction, I would be telling everybody. I was a woman in a group of men that brought the internet to Colombia. And because I was the only woman, I was called the internet girl. And I used to walk around pregnant with my son, talking about the internet. And so they said, oh, the internet girl is pregnant, and she's going to tell us about these new internet things. So it became a, a very strong image that I was pregnant with an idea, and I was going to tell them about it. I became a mom with my first son, Martin, and it changed my life forever. I became a mom again, and I had Aurita. Then at certain points, I thought I couldn't do it. I couldn't be able to hold down a career and raise my kids. So there were moments in which we felt insecure. I didn't feel that I had the bandwidth to do it all. And there was some dark spots in our life together. At a certain point where I became a single mother, trying to juggle my life, my career, my kids, I leaned a lot on my oldest son so that he could, in turn, take care of my younger daughter. He 
he assumed the role of fatherly figure for her early on. And I think that's why this photo is, is good because it shows us coming into the light from the dark and moving forward together as a team. What I'm looking for in this paper is that you understand the refugee problem. It is inspiring to be around a woman who has had such an impact, especially since she was implementing this technology in the 90s when it wasn't as common for women to be in technology. And I think that's something, again, that I aspire to do. To really, you know, invest my career in something that isn't necessarily a, a traditional path. Ahorita. I'm going to teach you something today. It's a dance called La Cumbia de Colombia. La Cumbia de Colombia. Good. I started teaching when I was 18 years old because I love to see people grow in their knowledge and their skills and it's a fascinating process to be a part of. I do think that the role of the professor has changed from being the expert in something to being a coach and to being more of an equal who has a lot of experience and that's what's valuable. I include my students as part of the solution to the problems because I think they bring a wealth of culture, experience, background to the table that is complementary to mine. I'm not the expert, I don't have the answers, but I will coach you, I will mentor you in trying to solve part of this puzzle together. And that's where the future of education is moving. I don't feel like I've lost touch with my country. Now that I've married, okay, I'm responsible for my husband's happiness and his daughter's happiness. We're a family of five, but in Colombia, they would say, oh, we sent Maria to the U.S. and she never came back. I became part of what's known as the brain drain. The best and brightest leave and never come back. And we are the ones that they need to come up with solutions to problems. So, of course, there's guilt there. But I think that because of what I teach, I'm giving back the possibility of thinking about these problems from an academic perspective. And that in some way, I've never left. I'm still discussing the problems that we had back then.